November 27, 2012, KenWeb, a multidisciplinary group of wetland experts, initiated a dialogue on the Tana Delta. I'd like to take this opportunity to warmly welcome you today to the National Museums of Kenya. At the commencement of the inaugural Tana Dialogues, these were researchers, decision makers and stakeholders drawn from various government ministries and institutions, local and international organizations, and most importantly, Tana Delta residents. A number of foreign governments were also represented. The Delta has a range of challenges, with land and water topping the list. In the recent past, in a pre-electoral context, those issues took a dramatic turn, leading to the killing of hundreds of people, women and children included. Ironically, weeks after the recent conflict occurred, this delta was declared a Ramsar site. Under this initiative of Kenweb, it's really the first time that we are engaging with the communities in dealing with matters of land, water, and the management of these resources. The dialogue forum started with prayers from the representatives of the two main communities in the Delta, followed by a minute of silence in honor of those who died in the recent conflict. The key issue of the Delta is one that we've ignored for a very long time. Many people discuss all sorts of things around wetlands, but they do not talk about water. Dorothy Nyingi kicked off the dialogue with a presentation, Floods and Ecosystems in the Tana Delta. During her presentation, she shared some facts on the main river that delivers water in the region. You'd expect that a big river would have a wider uh, basin at that point, but it's only 50 meters wide. And at this point, I just want you to realize just how little water actually gets to the wetland itself, if this is Garsen. There's another dam expected or being planned, the High Grand Dam, the High Grand Falls, that will further control these floods without any proper knowledge of the hydrology. We don't know how much water gets to the, to the wetland itself, or even how much water there really is in this channel. You can see that during the both flooded times, there is no overlap between the, 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 the livestock and the agriculture, because during the flooding, we mostly have agricultural activities happening. That's the green part, the sowing of the maize to the harvest in both uh, bimodal peaks, and also fisheries and other activities. Even if we continue talking about resource conflict, we know that the conflict can be worsened by what we are doing with the dams. So the dams have to ensure that they release water to the environment based on the bimodal system that the wetland is accustomed to. Also, we recommend control of water abstraction upstream in order to balance the water availability. It's not enough to think about what we have. It's about how do you continue monitoring in order to see what changes are occurring, in order to use this data. It will be more meaningful to have even capacity building, not to have consultancies, consultants coming here and doing their project and leaving us a model, but to build capacity of WARMA, capacity of the, of the Ministry of Water and other research institutions to continue this work. The presentation was followed by a panel discussion and reactions from the rest of the participants. <laughs> We are working in Kenya, we are working with the WARMA to support the implementation of their water plans. We selected the, the Tana Basin because this, it's, it has a very high economic value and a lot of ecosystems and things like that. Watu ambao wanaishi kule wako na elimu ya scientist yao ya kienyeji ambao 
inaweza wasaidia wale watu ya serikali ambao wanafanya hiyo kazi we are also aware that if we deny tana delta water the sea will come as the mzee say itakuja let us replace fresh water the second presentation during the first ever Tana Dialogue under the auspices of the National Museums of Kenya was done by Stephanie Duvel from IRD. For centuries, um, water, Okomo, Omas had customary rights and access to the Delta. Then in the colonial context, the Delta became Crown land. At independence then, uh, it became government land and not trust land. And it's, it's in contrast to other parts of northern Kenya where automatically crown land became trust land. So this is a, one of the specificity of the Tana Delta. Then in the 70s, you have a, another period where uh, collective ranches were created on terraces. Most of the ranches in the Tana Delta failed, but livestock production continued informally. So now today we have this uh, dichotomy between the official status of the land and customary rights of users in the Delta, um, and there's no, there's no link in bet between those two. Older branch is traditionally uh, uh, used by the Pokomo, and Matumba branch used by the Oma. So as we all know, the conflict happened in pre-electoral context as, as today. Stephanie shared with the participants the story on the restoration of the Senegal Delta. This picture was taken in 1993 after the wetland area in West Africa experienced drought. There were no floods for a decade and the land became saline. But looking at this picture that was taken seven years later, the plain was functional again after a restoration project to save the Senegal Delta was initiated. Kwa nini tana delta? Kila kampuni ikitokea, kila mwenye kutaka kujifaidi, lazima alenge kule. Ni vile hatuna wasomi kama huku kwenu ama ni vipi. We've been having different land deals, the G4 projects and what Stephanie has mentioned. We've been having different land use practices. We've been uh, the pastoralists, agriculturists, hunters and gatherers and all these are susceptible to conflict due to land deals in Tana. Land grabbing and large-scale land acquisition has been part and parcel of the, ta the current Tana, Tana Delta. Raisi alikuwa na uwezo wa kumpa mtu yeyote ardhi. Na ndio sababu watu walipigania kwamba hiyo sheria ifanye nini ibadilishwe. Sasa tumekuja tukasema a a hata commissioner hatutaki tunataka kuwe na commission ili si mtu mmoja peke yake ambaye anaweza kutoa ardhi bali ni commission ambayo ni watu ni watu kama tisa ambao wanaketi na wana wanakubaliana is there a possibility to to explore uh, the ways of tana data becoming community land under the new law the, two, the new constitution and the national land commission act and the community land bill um, there's apparently is a possibility of a new categories of community land so can the Tana Delta um, be a, a community land. With the new constitution, with the land commission, hopefully these things will improve. But as Kenyans, we're not always optimistic about the changes. And therefore it is for us here in this room to work towards stopping these things, stopping these acts of corruption, acts of theft. And all these systems always have developed and are still developing and are still rephrasing mechanisms for conflict prevention and mitigation. Olivia Hammerlink shared his thoughts on wetland management planning. This whole business of livestock and farming is not new. And you people from the Tana, you are not alone. This thing is happening all over the planet again and again since a very long time. In Tanzania also, after the Kiloza killings in 2000, 50 people killed, what did the government say? The Maasai should become sedentary. Okay. And the Giriyama should become astronauts. 
and the combat should become soccer players or what? I mean, w w these people, it's their culture, it's their being, it's their definition, it's their identity. So you need a certain level of democracy, of participation, of having a say about your own life. It's accountable, transparent, responsive, equitable and exclusive, effective and efficient, follows the rule of law, participatory and consensus oriented. And this is not only for the government, it's also for us, for all our organizations, for all our activities. Good governance is the standard. If somebody comes with money for a year and then it stops and then somebody else comes with money for two years and it stops, you just raise expectations. And then the people, they're disgusted. They've answered the same questions a hundred times. It doesn't go anywhere. Also means you need consistent donor support. You don't go for a donor that changes its mind every year. The startup team, we've talked about it. Uh, it has to be perceived as a as an honest broker and it needs to be well linked because you have to tell the people the truth. What is possible? Can we have 300,000 hectares flooded in the Tana every year? No. The water is not there. Create this mixed forum, we've talked about it, maybe we need to, to do these things. Very important also is that we need to create a level playing field. So you can't put uh, shell petroleum and uh, uh, a farmer who has three cows in the same meeting initially because they're not at the same level of, ne of power, negotiation, knowledge, etc. So you need a lot of capacity building, especially in the most vulnerable stakeholders. Thank you. We are working in the Toronto Delta is that we really want to work with the community to have a voice in the process of uh, how they use the resources in the Toronto Delta to be able to be looked at and also be able to communicate with either investors, government, and to participate in all this process. What we have to establish is two levels of coordination. One at the community level. And I immediately think, who are the actors at the community level? Yourselves, the PAC created for the land use plan, uh, local government offices, whether they're in the district or in the new county structure, um, activists in the community, you will need to identify who your players are. When we have opportunity to come for a meeting like this, let make and says maximum use of it. If you have small funding from the government, from the funding agencies, let's make maximum use of it. I'm, I'm saying this in particular case because if you go at the local level, the district planners. We have problems upstream and problems downstream, but we don't have a connection of these problems. Who do the upstream users know of what the downstream users are facing and vice versa? So I was suggesting if there can be a forum where we form an upstream users forum and a downstream users forum and give them an opportunity to meet, if possible, and exchange views of what problems these are facing. But I do also see that uh, at one point we may want to bring the MPs within that basin together at that level, at the level of the MPs so that uh, we can let them know what we are thinking and let them buy in, buy into our ideas. If you go to those people and offer them, I don't know how much, but they can't sell that river to you. So the value of that land, that river, is not monetary, by the way. So we need to look at, very carefully at that. But I think it's come out very clearly in this meeting that the problems in the Delta are not to do with conservation. The problems are land ownership and water. I think unless the land ownership problem is sorted out and the uh, availability of water, the flood water, is returned to the delta, there can be no conservation. We should try to make, uh, we should try to, to define that economic value and should try to find ways how we can improve the economic value of the Tana Delta.
the 163,600 hectares of land in the Tana is now a Ramsar site under the Convention on Wetlands of International Importance. This initiative is the only global environmental treaty that deals with a particular ecosystem globally. And now that the Tana Delta is a Ramsar site, uh, there are several uh, conditions that the country is obliged to, uh, to carry out. And one of these is to ensure that there is a management plan in place. And this has to be a specific wetland management plan because the Tana Delta is an important wetland and an important bad area. So we must put structures in place to ensure that there is uh, sustainable management of the Delta.